we're here, Darkness Emergence Chicago, with B. Dave Walters. It is I, B. Dave Walters. Uh, no, it's uh, sorry, sorry. It's uh, I, I do so many of these. I'm used to just being like, bleh. Um, uh, vampire storyteller played Baron Victor Temple on L.A. by Night, playing Prince Kevin Jackson. Uh, here, uh, you can find me all over the interwebs, wherever fine streaming content can be located. Absolutely. And if they can't find you that way, we have a question for you of another way someone might be able to get a hold of you. Yeah. So our channel summons stories. Uh, so we ask uh, this question in all our interviews, but um, we've drawn a circle. We've lit the candles. We're trying to summon B. Dave Walters. There's three empty spaces in this circle. What are we placing down in order to summon you? Eggs. Coffee, a 20-sided die, and a copy of Final Draft screenwriting software. Okay. okay. It's dangerous because those aren't hard items to get a hold of. It's, I said what I said. <laughs> I, I, I would not be easy to catch. Like just a box with a stick. <laughs> you don't even need a summoning circle. Just like put it out there and I'm like, ooh. Hang on. But, you know. It's be nice. Okay. Yeah. It's no just problem. like a, tr it's, it's not a summoning circle. It's like one of a cardboard box yes. propped up with a ruler yep. under it. You're going to. Same system. I'll knock the ruler over myself. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> You'll bring your own ruler and knock it over. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so, obviously, you're very experienced in the whole world of TTRPGs and even vampire. And uh, through some of your storytelling and DMing, you've already been in projects that kind of play with that line between LARP and, and tabletop. Um, so, what is your LARP experience? Uh, so... With the world of darkness, uh, I, I was there when Vampire came out in the 90s that uh, I'm way older than I look, um, and uh, that all just fell right on my face. Like, I, I was the demographic. Uh, but some of my earliest experiences with Vampire were actually LARP, uh, and LARPing as a venture. Uh, even way back then, the Clan of Kings chose me. So, um, you are right that in, in the modern era of actual plays, especially ones that have done well, we draw very heavily on elements of LARP. We did in LA by Night. In fact, we even referred to it at the time as LARP Top, uh, is, is what we were doing. This is what was so dramatic. This whole entire episode, we don't roll any dice at all. Um, so, I mean, if, if the tables had been moved and we'd been standing, uh, it, it all would have worked out about the same. I think the only difference is we might have physically gone towards each other more often, but uh, the story as we told it kind of wouldn't have changed too terribly much. Yeah, and you did that with D&D too. You did stand up. And, and I did. So, yeah, I, it's, yeah I, I was the, the first dungeon master to have a, a campaign on television. Very proud of that with an invitation to party. Uh, and I did that on purpose. Uh, that, that I wanted to be able to pull people in. They knew, full, full credit to G4, they knew they wanted to have an improv component, but they didn't know what that was going to look like. Uh, and then I came and I was like, well, it needs to be like this type thing. Um, in fact, the only reason it was, the only reason the entire show wasn't that is it was officially sponsored by D and D by, by Wizards of the Coast. Yeah. And so we did want to make sure people saw that it's like, well, when you're playing at home, yeah, you, yeah. you sit at the table and you kind of roll some dice and you have a tablet, right? So we wanted to kind of give a glimpse of both of those things that it could be a traditional tabletop game, and that you could bring a performance to a tabletop game, but also the level of immersion could kind of go to 11. Do you think that's something, so for people used to tabletop who are interested in LARP but haven't made the leap, do you think that's a, a transition they can make, is almost incorporate LARP elements into their game, or do you suggest just throw the table away and dive into a LARP? I think you should just go to a LARP, because in my experience, um, I'd say, I'd say there, there's tiers of it. Um, when, when you're playing even at the table, um, encourage people that when they put that mask on not to take it off again. Like once we're playing, I only refer to people as their character names. Um, when they're like, well, my character is going to, I'm like, no, no, I'm going to, you know? Um, just do it. You don't have to preface it, be it, embody it. And in that, you're already kind of getting it. I think what a lot of times people are worried about with LARPs is, especially if they're going alone, that they'll show up, they won't know anybody, it'll be weird and awkward. Um, and you know, Good LARPs is not like that. Of course, Darkness Emergent is not like that, friend. There's room for you at the Elysium. Uh, but uh, you know, I think everybody is very sensitive to kind of make sure somebody's brought in. There's different ways to engage with the content. There's, there's whole entire plot lines here uh, that you don't ever have to engage with another human being if, if, if you're the more introverted type, which I think is great. 
Um, but if you're thinking about trying it, definitely try it. I, I think all things being equal, it's probably better to bring a friend. But I mean, I'd say the same thing if you were going to a concert or a bar you'd never been to. It'd take a wingmate, you know what I mean? So you have somebody that you're going to enjoy it with. Uh, but yeah, I think if you're at all curious, just jump in. The big difference, the major difference to me between a LARP and a tabletop is, a, of course, there's some mechanical differences, but I already tell a very immersive story. What's different is how it's happening in real time. You know, we three are talking. There's, there's a group of people over there talking, uh, and we don't know what they're talking about, but it's all affecting the world. And if a fight breaks out or something, you know, then the three of us have to be like, what's going on, you know, and go and try and interact. So I think that real time aspect of a lot of stuff happening is the biggest difference to me. Yeah, that makes sense. That and no scene changes where it's like, yeah. okay, the next day it's like, now this is, we're playing this night out entirely. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. uh, really interesting. Yeah. There's a, a, a buddy of mine, uh, Bruce Monarch, who's walking around. He's actually in that room. If you get a chance to interview him, you, you should grab and talk to him. Uh, he run, would run a LARP uh, out of his house. And he had a pretty nice house. And um, what he set it up is each room was a different location in the city. Oh. So whereas what we're doing here is we all kind of this one place. It'd be like, you know, the... the the living room is the Elysium. Uh, outside in the forest was literally the Los Angeles National Forest. Uh, the basement was where the Nosferatu are, you know? And so that was a way to kind of set up the transitions, which was neat. Uh, so sometimes different people do it different ways, but you're right. The fact that it is almost without exception, real time is uh, one, of the th uh, one of the best parts about it. Great. Oh, can I jump in? Yeah, jump in. I wanted to jump back to something you said about you know, when you're going to a new bar or a concert, you bring a buddy. And obviously in my head, I'm like, if you're a good concert buddy, you know, you're going to have water in your purse. You're going to bring stuff. We're new to LARP. We're coming to this together. Uh, two friends jumping in. What makes you a good LARP buddy? Just committing to the bit, you know? <laughs> We're going like, to be fine. <laughs> like, like, yeah, I notice sometimes there's people that it's like, sometimes they're just nervous, but it's like when you refuse to engage because you don't want to look silly, oftentimes when everyone's laughing and you're not, that makes you more conspicuous, not less. You know, like if, uh, obviously this is an extreme example, but you know, if a dance battle breaks out and you're the only person standing stock still, you know, like that makes you stand out more than if you even just like give a little something, you know? Yeah. Uh, spoiler alert, the prince is gonna have a dance battle. Um, I'm ready. I'm not yeah, ready. Yeah, I, I can tell by the shirt that <laughs> you're ready. ready. Like, it's like your training has led to this. Um, so yeah, un understand that, that that's what you're there for. You're there to have a good time. I, th I think it is very normal just sort of have a learning curve of understanding what is it that I'm doing here. Like I, I was fortunate to run D&D for the cast of Stranger Things. And um, if, you, if you watch it, uh, not everybody had played and Joe had never played before. And you can see the moment that it clicks for him, that he's like, oh, this is the thing we're doing, you know? And, and so I think if you've never done it before, it's completely normal, kind of being like, what's happening? We're all vampire, do, do I, I'm still doing, Yes, I'm a vampire, you know, and, and at some point you're like, oh, oh, and then, you know, he's on into it. What do I mean? Right. Absolutely. And as you mentioned, uh, the prince and his dance battles, you're here as a, a special guest. You're portraying Prince Jackson, obviously a huge uh, character in the canon, not just for the Chicago, they're just all VTM lore. Mm -hmm. um, so what was your process like a little bit for coming in is because an interesting thing about LARPs too is the storyteller doesn't play all the NPCs you you cast NPCs kind of in a way and you got cast as the guy I did um so presumably your your audience is fairly familiar with vampire but but on the off chance you aren't there's a clan called Ventru they're business vampires uh in in a gross oversimplification there's kind of two main factions of the Camarilla and the Anarchs the very structured people and, and the independent people. Again, a gross oversimplification. <laughs> and the, one of the things I'm known for is I played one of the business vampires that was on the outside of the power structure. And Prince Jackson is one of the business vampires, which is very much at the top of the power structure. Um, so it, it's, it's, not, it's not a far leap. 
for me to, to, to understand him and how he works and, and what he would want. Um, it's just to, to what are his motivations, essentially. Um, I have tried to be mindful of embodying him in a way that is different than Victor Temple, but still with certain thematic through lines because they're both Ventru and they, you know, they, they both want to rule the world. So um, uh, I, I just made sure, I was already pretty familiar with his lore, but you know, caught myself up on it and made sure I was fresh. And um, yeah, it's ready to do what it does. You know? Yeah, I've heard you've been rocking it so far. I will say, and this is the God's honest truth, you can ask Jimmy, when they asked me to do this, I was like, let me just ask you up front, can I kill all characters? You know, I was like, I was like because I, yes, he, you know, on, on a meta level, my job is to facilitate the guest enjoyment. You know, that I, I, I am a spoke that the wheel is rotating around to make sure everybody has a good night. And yet, the world of darkness is gonna do what it does. And if somebody says the wrong thing, the world works how it works. Type it's immersion, thing. right? I, it's, I, I, I would like the record to show that I was told I could, in fact, enact the Prince of Justice on. Uh, so, okay. sure, we'll license come up to with, kill. Sure, won't come up with you guys. Yeah, you guys. Yeah. You guys I was gonna say fine. we're gonna be just fine. That's all good. We'll, all good. When we do our review and our recap, we'll, depending on how nice you are to us, we'll give you a glowing review. Or you <laughs> know, the joy of being a Ventru Prince is uh, we don't read reviews. So, okay, there you go. This never gets released. Now we know why you buried it. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't me. It was the Nas. Uh, any other last words for potential LARPers out there, or VTM enthusiasts? You try it. Yeah, I mean, if, if you it, there, there's there's a lot of different kinds of LARPs too. We're here doing vampires set in the modern day. Uh, there's a ton of fantasy ones. Twin Mask was a fantasy. Um, Arguably, I think Wasteland Weekend is a quasi-LARP because you're still sort of like playing a role uh, when you're out there in the desert. If you have an opportunity and it seems neat, even if you just kind of look into it and you're like, hmm, that might be fun, yeah, give it a shot. You'll have a good time. And almost certainly get hooked. Yeah, it seems like everyone gets hooked. Most people, once they get in there, they, they stay in there. So that bodes well for it. Okay, well, you have a city to run, so we'll let you get back to that. Thank you very much for your time. Nightfall soon, y'all. Yeah, thank you uh, so much. Thank you. Bye.